in assessing uh, proliferation risks, one has to bear in mind that the world is witnessing uh, tectonic power shifts. Uh, these shifts symbolize the birth banks of a new global order. We all know the world is in, tra is in transition, but we still do not see the contours of a new world order. And when you have shifts of this kind taking place, they also create new uncertainties. And that makes it very difficult to look at future trends in proliferation. The future of our world will be determined by a number of factors, including demographics, energy and natural resources, climate change, and a host of political factors that range from geopolitical competition between major powers uh, down to accelerated weaponization of science. So, in a world where we're seeing rapid change and we're seeing new uncertainties, we have to assess in this context what is the future of the NPT, uh, what kind of proliferation challenges we will see, and how should we should be able to tackle these challenges as and when they emerge. Adding to the uncertainties is the fact that the NPT regime itself is facing a crisis of confidence. Let's admit it. This is not a new crisis of confidence in the NPT. Uh, it's been there for a long time. I think it's fair to assume that the next 25 years or so will bring equally dramatic technological and geopolitical change. So we have to evolve solutions in a world which is so which is changing so rapidly that we need to ensure that anti-proliferation measures remain dynamic, are not static. The NPT, whether we like it or not, is an inherently unequal treaty. And therefore, if the NPT is to survive, we'll have to mitigate some of the inequalities inherent in this regime. A, a second uh, set of things we need to do relate to fuel supply uh, to meet the demand for assured fuel supply. This is becoming more important because the nuclear power industry is suddenly, suddenly uh, faces a, um, a boom time. A global uh, revival, nuclear revival, uh, is on the card. So when you have many other nations coming, uh, taking interest in nuclear power, Certainly we need a regime that regulates nuclear fuel supply. If we cannot provide a short fuel supply, then we will create incentives for countries to pursue independent nuclear fuels cycle activity. And I think that guaranteeing a short fuel supply is essential because already one division within the NPT regime is not just between the nuclear weapon states and the non-nuclear weapon states. There's also a division among the non-nuclear weapon states in the NPT. We need to bridge that divide by creating an international regime where nuclear fuel is available across the board to all those who are good faith adherents to the NPT regime. So without a revival of the disarmament process, uh, we, we do face uh, uh, the danger that uh, the NPT regime could weaken. Um, but the biggest uh, and the most uh, worrying um, uh, proliferation risk, in my view, uh, relates to not states, it relates to non state actors. And it relates to not non state actors in general, it relates to one category of non state actors, what I call state sponsored non state actors state-sponsored non-state actors because only one type of non-state actors can carry out a radio, radioactive uh, attack, a dirty bomb attack. These are elements who are extremists, have ties to the state, with state elements, with state institutions, and have access to nuclear materials. 
only such a category of non-state actors can carry out any kind of radioactive, radioactive attack. Let's be clear. Nuclear power plants are setting ducks and thus attractive targets for extremists and terrorists. My, um, my concern is that the next crisis in the nuclear power industry uh, will come not from um, a Chernobyl, but will come from a terrorist strike on a nuclear power plant. Uh, you know, given the qualitative escalation of international terrorism in the past decade, every major international strike of the last decade has been innovative in terms of the selection of targets. And therefore, an attack on a nuclear power facility no longer is in the realm of fantasy. We'll have to look at political measures uh, now in terms of, um, of creating disincentives for proliferation. But we need to feel reassured that the IE safeguards work and they work rather well. It's only if the country decides to withdraw from the NPT like the DPRK did and then you know embark on a nuclear weapons program or while being part of the NPT a country decides to have secret facilities where it is engaged in nuclear weapons activity. Yes, those possibilities are there. But as far as IA safeguards are concerned, as far as IA safeguard facilities are concerned, there's never been a single case where facility safeguards have been breached.